So we are paranormal investigators and somebody needs our help at this location to find out if something's going on. And the way we do that is by using the equipment that we brought along in this truck to determine if something is inside of this place. Welcome to Phasmophobia. I've been playing this for about a day and a half now and I promise you guys it does not disappoint. It is a whole load of fun. If you don't know what it is, essentially it emulates a show that I've mentioned a few times on the channel, which is called Ghost Adventures. We go in as paranormal investigators and our job is to try and capture evidence of something going on. And if we do capture evidence, we jot it down into this journal. Once we get three pieces of evidence, it should give us the ghost type that we're dealing with. And that is the ultimate goal. We need to find out what specific ghost we're dealing with so we can get out of here so the ghost teams can come in and do their thing. Now, you also get optional objectives, which in this case, it says discover what type of ghost we're dealing with, prevent the ghost from hunting with a crucifix, detect a ghost presence with a motion sensor, and find evidence of the paranormal with an EMF reader. Also, it gives you a little bit of a side thing, which says you've done more investigating for us. Looks like the ghost's name is Joseph Johnson. This ghost also seems to only respond to people who are alone. You should be able to use its name to anger it and get some paranormal activity. Make sure you refer to the journal so you guys know what's going on right now i want to just take a look at something though we got some extra screens because this game i think is more designed to play with people which i have been doing so if you've got someone that's not so comfortable with going on location or into the actual buildings you can use them as tech support <laughs> they stay from the the safety of the truck and they'll watch you back from here but the job's not over for them either because they can watch these monitors and look for things like ghost orbs, which is part of the clue that you need to find, or it could be a clue that you could find on location. So you've got all different kinds of things that can help you, like the blueprints of the building, sound sensors if you're using them, the total location EMF activity that's going on, and if it, this starts spiking, you know something's going on inside where the people are, where everybody's investigating. And then, of course, you've got the sanity as well. This, though, is the fun part for me. This thing here... I believe it's a UV torch. Either way, it shows fingerprints that have been left behind because sometimes you will get some poltergeist activity, whether it be things opening or things moving. And sometimes, just sometimes, there's marks that are left behind and this thing will find them. On the left of that, you've got the torch, which I'm trying not to use as much because the whole feeling of being isolated in the dark is usually when I get the most responses from these things. Video camera, obviously pretty self-explanatory. If someone's inside, you can plot this down and they can keep an eye out for you. Now, this is a cool one. This is a ghost writing book. Essentially, if you're inside of a building and you're not getting any kind of responses, you'll need to try different tactics. This is a really cool one. You place the book down. Sometimes when there's activity, you'll come back to the book and something will be written inside of it. Sometimes things that you don't even like. But that is another piece of evidence that you need to find to determine what ghost you're dealing with. Over here, now this is one of my favorite ones. When I saw this, it kind of made me hold my breath a little bit because I instantly recognized what this was. And I hope you guys do too. This is a spirit box. Essentially what this does is scans frequencies and it's said that if there's any spirits around, they can communicate with you through those frequencies. Sometimes you only get one word. Sometimes if you're very lucky, you will get complete sentences. But this is called the SB7 spirit box. And I love the fact that they've added this. Over here, you've got a thermometer for temperature drops. Again, another telltale sign that there's a spirit around is the temperature completely drops. It goes into the minuses. And again, that's another clue that we need to look out for. I did bring some sanity pills along just in case because I am doing a solo investigation. We've also got a camera as well, which can be a lot more useful than people think. Over here, this is called a smudge stick. I think what this is supposed to replicate is something like incense. If you go into a room and you burn it, kind of puts the brakes on the ghost from appearing for a while so you can get a little bit of a breather if you're conducting any type of investigation this thing would give you a little bit of room to work around this another one is another favorite of mine the emf detector electromagnetic frequencies there's a number on it or i guess there's dots on it one through to five what you're looking for is a big hit so when you turn this thing on and you get that green light if you're in the presence of a ghost usually you'll get a hit so it'll spike between one two and three what you're looking for though is an emf level of five because that is one of the clues that we need to work out if that is in this location so let me just actually place that down real quick let's see what it is we're dealing with i know it said 
the ghost name responds to Joseph Johnson. Now, one unique thing about this game that I've not really seen enough of in games, and I love this mechanic. If you talk to the spirit, you can provoke a response. If you use its name, it angers it. And you only have five minutes really to determine what's going on in this place. And after that five minutes, these things will get super annoyed. And then that's when it starts to hunt you. So it's a bit of a roll of the dice. If you get in there and you can find some clues, all three clues pretty quick, and you can get out with the ghost, you're golden. If not, then it's going to be a little bit of a, a time trying to work out what you got in there. Because you don't know what it could be and you don't know what it's going to do. So let's get into it then. I'm going to gear up and we're heading inside the house. Here we go. I'm going in with an EMF meter. I'm going to use a torch as well, just so I can see what's going on. And I'm going in with a thermometer as well, because I really like it when you get those cold temperatures. We've got the key to the place. The owner's left us that. As soon as we cross this threshold, that five minutes starts. So, here we go. Now we're inside. You can really feel the tension building. Completely pitch black. You can turn the lights on. And there will be a breaker box somewhere that sometimes the lights trip and you have to get it turned back on as well. By right, Joseph Johnson, it said that this ghost name was. Let's see if we can get a response. Joseph Johnson. Okay, we didn't get an immediate response. Let's go around with the EMF meter, see if we can get a hit. I know it's really dark for you guys. But what you guys are seeing is exactly what I'm seeing too. Right, so we've got one normal room here. We've got a bathroom. Nothing seems to be going on. The second we get a hit, you guys will know because the meter that we've got in our hand will spike a little bit. I don't quite like this room. You can see why. It's just it's terrifying. When something happens in here, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> and nothing right now. We're getting a, a flat baseline of just one. Sometimes you won't even get an EMF reading too. I mean, I've had locations where, where nothing's gone on. Did I just see something? Joseph Johnson, are you there? Do you want us to leave? If you're wondering why I said, do you want us to leave? is one i'm including you guys in this and two i don't think the game is built for solo play so a lot of the trigger questions that you ask generally you get a response when you use things like us instead of me right oh there we go some footsteps switch to emf hearing footsteps over this side sometimes it can just be the house moving not picking up anything yet though we haven't really got a history on this ghost either we don't know if somebody died at this location we don't know if it's something more sinister i think it's time though that we go down into the basement this is really where the hairs stand up on the back of your neck when you get some activity down here there's a hammer just in the middle of the floor oh all right there we go there we go okay so it's cold that's our first clue. Do we want to go into the book? Freezing temperatures. Where is it? There we go. And we can back that up with this. You can see minus five, six, seven degrees. Right, I'm going to turn the light on because I just want to keep an eye out for a second. That's our first clue, though. Definitely did look like something was out of place while this is in the middle of the floor because I've investigated a location like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. I'm going to try and just stay down here for a little bit longer. I was going to head out. See if I could get the UV light to detect fingerprints, but I think we've got something going on. Like I say, usually you get a lot more response, or I guess a lot more action when the lights are off, but... It's easier said than done, I promise you guys, especially being solo. But we've kind of isolated right now where this ghost could be, because we've got cold temperatures down in the basement. It's probably the worst case scenario because this is the most terrifying spot, but we'll live with it. 
Still cold. Minus 6.9. Minus, minus 11. Is he here? Joseph Johnson. Are you here? I like to really give it like 30 seconds to see what happens. I'm going to provoke it a little bit. Show yourself. <gasps> okay. Definitely showed himself. I'm really going to try and not freak out on you guys. Because it's so easy in this game to scream. If we're going to get a lot of activity. I don't know if that five minutes is up. It probably is because it seems like it just flies. When that five minutes is up, the ghost is then in hunting mode and anything can happen. So I'm going to head back to the truck real quick. I'm going to grab... I think I'm going to get rid of the EMF detector because nothing seems to be happening when I was down there. All right, let's get rid of the EMF. I'm going to get rid of the torch and we know it's already cold, so there's no need for that. Let me just check. With freezing temperatures, that will give us a list. So we've got a wraith. We've got a phantom, a banshee, a mare, a demon, a yuri. Okay, so out of those, let's just go to the first one that it came with. It was wraith, wasn't it? So if you guys are not sure what it is you're dealing with, even if you're struggling to find evidence, there are a few things that you can use to kind of give you clues. So if you go across to Wraith, it will give you a bit of a description of it. A Wraith is one of the most dangerous ghosts you will find. It's also the only known ghost that has the ability of flight and has sometimes been known to travel through walls. This one is... I'm hoping I don't get this one. I've had one of these before and it's terrifying when they just appear through a wall and you think you're safe. Okay, we'll do an SB7 spirit box session. If I die with this, guys, it's all in the name of research, okay? <laughs> I'm not one of those paranormal investigators that will turn tail and run at the first sign of something going on. I promise you all. I might hide, but I will not run away. Famous last words when all the lights go out now, guys. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I promise you all I will. <laughs> oh, okay, we got activity. Let me just get the camera set up real quick, so... Let's rotate it around this way. Turn the camera on. Place it down. Right, we've got we've got eyes on the basement now. So if we go back outside, we can see what's going on. I'm also going to put the book down. Like, right there. So we can see if anything's been... Oh, my God. Okay, that's... That's evidence of something. Right there. Get the door open. Oh, I hate that noise. Reminds me of the grudge. Told you guys I'm not going to run. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going for the door. That door will lock. If we get a huge spike in activity at this location, that door will lock and I will not be able to get out. So I have to hide in things like this or behind a door and just keep really quiet. So if I'm hiding and I'm not talking, you guys know why. Okay. All right. Let's go back down. Lights are off. I'm going to keep the lights off. And we're going to conduct an SB7 spirit box session. All right, here we go. SB7 is on. Can you speak? <sighs> Nothing detected. Make a noise. Nothing detected. Turn on the light. Not seeing anything. All I can see is my breath and the SB7 flickering through the frequencies. Do you want us to leave? Nothing detected. Oh, I can hear something. Okay. Just for a second. I heard footsteps walking straight towards me then. That was horrible. So, one of the things about the SB7, as far as I know is it will not work while you've got lights on. I think that includes torches as well. So you have to do it in complete darkness. That's when you're going to get the best results. All right, I'm just going to leave this stuff here because a lot of the activities... A lot of the activities happening down here. I'm going to go back to the truck. I'm going to leave the lights off. We're going to see if we can capture any evidence on the video camera because we got the book down there. Maybe if I give it a little bit of space, it's going to give me a clue in the book. I don't know. We can grab some more equipment, though, and come back. 
There we go. So you guys can see here, there's been a little bit of location activity that looks like it spiked to a 4 or a 5. When this thing hits 10, that's when shit really does get real. Like the door locks, the front door locks, so you can't leave and you're in danger. That's when you need to hide. Right, now we can use a smudge stick down in the basement. If stuff's getting a little bit too hot and heavy, I can use this smudge stick and it will suppress any activity for a while, but this is what we want to pay attention to. Can we see any ghost orbs or anything? You guys catch that? That was a ghost orb. That had to have been... Yep, there we go. Ghost orb. That was the second one. So our second clue, that was 100% moving. Not like a bug or anything like that, or a piece of dust falling from the ceiling. Yeah, you guys can see this. Look at that. Right, so our second clue that we found on location is ghost orb. So that leaves us with either trying to find an EMF hit of a level 5. We need to get a spirit box response. We need to find fingerprints. And or find something in the book, which is ghost writing. So for now, we're going to leave it empty and let's see what we've got. Our options are phantom, a mare, or a yuri. Okay, so it's between those three. Does that look like to you guys there's writing in the book? Can you see this bit here? And then over on this side, if I keep the mouse really still, can you see like something's been placed in the book? I think that's got writing in it. Right, let's just say hypothetically that that has got writing in the book. So we select ghost writing. So freezing temperatures, we found ghost orbs and now ghost writing. We think, what does that leave us with? That's a Yuri. So we go to what the Yuri says. Yuri is a ghost that has returned to the physical world, usually for the purpose of hatred. Unique strengths. Yuris have been known to have a stronger effect on people's sanity. Weaknesses. Smudging the Yuri's room will cause it not to wander around the location for a long time. And the three pieces of evidence are what we suspect it might be. Ghost orb, ghost writing, and freezing temperatures. Let's have a look at our sanity. I mean, it's not too low. Maybe when we heard that kind of grudge noise, then that could have been it. I'm going to go in with the fingerprint. And I'm going to take a smudge stick just to keep it calm. What are our optional objectives? Crucifix, we do not have. Protected ghost presence with a motion sensor. Yeah, no, we don't have anything like that with us right now. I do have this stuff and I can get it, but don't have it on us right now. Okay, here we go. I'm going to keep the door open. Kind of feels a little bit heavier in here now. Every single corner that I'm turning... I don't remember if I left this door open. Let's turn this light on. We've got something in the book. It says die, die, die. Okay, right. Well, that's our evidence done. I'm going to light the smudge stick. Is it going to do it? Oh, I think I might need a lighter. Yeah, I actually think I might need a lighter to do it. Let's just see if we can get an EMF fit. I'm really pushing it now. Bottom line is, the last piece of evidence that we needed was the ghost writing, and we got it. So it looks like we're dealing with a Yuri, I think it was. Yep, that's what we got, so we found evidence. I'm not getting anything on EMF, though. As far as I'm concerned, that's a job well done. We weren't there longer than we needed to be. We found paranormal evidence. I mean, if we were, we would definitely be recording that, so we would have seen... There we go, and more ghost orbs. We would have seen words appear in the book. So what we want to do now, I don't know if there's any kind of punishment for not bringing your equipment, but I would really love that to be a thing in the game. Like, if you leave your equipment there and you don't have it for the next investigation, that's a kind of penalty, because if you are an investigator, you need your stuff. So, I mean, we're just going to go with it. Put the back up. Right now in the journal, we've got it as a Yuri, and we're going to find out if we're right or not. Contract payment. Objective one was complete. We got insurance of $10. The ghost was a Yuri and we got a difficulty multiplier of $20. Now, I think this only really takes effect when you've got more than one person actually doing the investigating with you, which I don't quite understand. Surely if there was less people and you've managed to work out what type of ghost it was, it would be even more of a multiplier. But I mean, I'm not complaining. We made it out there alive. Let's have a look at what the extra stuff is that we can buy with our cash. Now we're almost level 9. I think we should have unlocked pretty much everything in here. 
so I can use different things. So we've got extra EMF readers, flashlights, some extra cameras, lighters. Yeah, I definitely needed one of those, so I'm going to buy that. It's only $10. A candle. I haven't tried that yet, but my friends have told me that this can be blown out while you're on location. If it's all pitch black and you have the candle on, the actual ghost can blow this candle out, <laughs> which is just sounds, it sounds horrible, but I mean, I can see how that would work to detect something. Infrared light sensor, an infrared motion sensor that detects both human and paranormal movement. When set off, it will illuminate the surrounding area with a bright light. Okay, so if you guys can picture like a trail cam, when something moves in front of it, it will just flash. And if that's not us, we know we got something else in the room with us. That's not a bad one that I might actually bring with 59. Okay, maybe not because I don't have enough. Parabolic microphone. Now this was one of the pieces of equipment that I was really looking forward to using. Unfortunately though, I've not been getting the best out of it. Whenever I see things like ghost adventures and stuff, when they use this piece of equipment, they can detect sounds over great distances, whether it be in like an old abandoned hotel or being in a wide open area or something. They always seem to get really creepy things through it. And I was really hoping that it would be the same with this. So far though, I've not really had much luck with it. What else? We got glow stick and head mounted camera. I'm definitely going to be using these when I get a few of the guys in. So we can kind of track where everybody's position is. And you can see it in night vision as well. So it makes it even more terrifying. Optional objectives. Discover what type of ghost we're dealing with. Detect a room below 10 Celsius with a thermometer. Capture a photo of the ghost. Cleanse the area near the ghost using smudge sticks. Right, we have that because we've got the camera and we've got smudge sticks that we can use. Didn't I grab? Yes, I got the lighter as well. So we can possibly do that if we want to. We've got all the regular stuff as well. You can see I've got a little bit extra in the way of equipment now. Just showing you guys what it looks like when you fill out this truck a little bit more. And what did they say it was? I've done some more investigating for you. It looks like the ghost name is Sandra Garcia. All right, got myself my old trusty EMF meter. Let's go with the fingerprint one this time and let's grab a torch so I can show you guys this place. It's a lot bigger than the last location or at least it feels that way. All right, let's grab the owner's keys. The five minutes starts as soon as we enter the door. It's so imposing when you're just walking towards it like that. All the lights off apart from one. There's the front door. I've just thought of something. Before we actually go through the door and the timer starts counting down, let's see if we can peek through the window at getting any activity. Because if something's happening, then we at least know what room we need to head to. Because usually it's whatever room has the most activity is where you will find the ghost. So if we can get an early indication of that, then that'd be perfect because we're, we're using as much time as possible from that five minutes. I don't quite know if it actually stirs things up, though, unless you're on location. This building is huge as well. Like it says the location's small. <laughs> it really isn't. Actually, I don't know if it did say this location was small. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I read the, uh, the roadhouse one. Some pumpkins in the back. Making the, okay, making the, everything a lot more terrifying. But you can see, though, different locations. We're going to be dealing with different ghosts. When you've got a few more people as well, the paranoia can set in really, really, really quick. Just like that there. I thought I saw a, uh, a shadow, but it was my own from the torch. Can we actually go in this way? Oh, I suppose we can. Oh, we're going in from the back. Here we go. And we're in. What was the name? Sandra Garcia wasn't. Let's see. Sandra Garcia, can you hear my voice? You hear that? That was footsteps. Over to the right, I think it was in this room. Sandra Garcia, is that you? She's here. Do something. Are you alone? I heard that. It was over here. Any fingerprints anywhere? Are you evil? Right, let's turn on the EMF. Let's see if we can get anything. 
We're looking for a hit. We're looking for that gre green dot to spike a little bit. We're definitely getting that activity here. I'm hearing noises. All the lights are off. Do something. We're not moving, guys. I'm not going to move anything so you can hear this. Turn a light on. It's right in front. Give us a sign. I saw dust here. I'm gonna turn the light on a second because I know you guys can't see. Let me turn this one on too. Definitely sounds like it's coming from this area. I'm not getting a hit with the EMF though. Nothing's coming through. And in terms of fingerprints, footsteps or anything, I'm just gonna open this door in case I need to make a quick getaway. I'm not seeing anything. Sandra Garcia, can you hear my voice? I'll take that as a yes. All right, what else we got? Activity over there. Every single time I'm talking, we're getting something. Close the door. Every movement over in the back room. Still finding no evidence of fingerprints. I'm going to do one rotation with the EMF meter, see if I'm picking anything up. Is that you, Sandra? Okay, nothing on EMF. I'm going to return back to the truck, see if we can swap out some equipment, see if we can get some better results. You guys heard that though, we're definitely, we're hearing footsteps, we're hearing creaks. Sometimes it can be the house moving and adjusting, but I mean, there we go. Getting a little bit of location activity going up to what looks like a two. Let's just drop this for now and get rid of this one. Let's try the book. Maybe she wants to write in the book, let us know something. And what about, I didn't see anything with temperature. I didn't see my breath. Spirit box. I always like using the spirit box. Let's go with that one. What's the time remaining? We're all out of time. The five minutes is up. So technically she could now be in hunting mode. I'm going to leave the book just there. Sandra, if you can hear my voice... And you write in this book. Oh. Do you want me to leave? Have you been here a long time? Might be upstairs. Are you friendly? All right, heading upstairs. Looks like we got three rooms. We got a room with a light on over here. This is where I was hearing footsteps from. I did not do that. That's good, Sandra. I've got a direct response. I'm going back down the stairs to grab the book. I'm going to be bringing it upstairs, see if we can get something from that. I'm going to place the book on the floor here. 
Gonna hold for a second, see if we get any more activity. Door opening down the hallway. Show yourself. Some flashing lights. When were you born? Movement to my immediate right. Sandra Garcia, can you write in this book? All right, pretty sure I've got something in this room with me right now. I'm gonna kill the lights. SB7 is going on. Let's conduct some spirit box, here we go. Can you speak to us? What did she say? Eat? She's saying eat or leave. Sandra, do you want us to leave? I'm gonna leave the spirit box running in this room in case the lights go off, then we've got it going. Probably going to get... Oh, lights went off. Oh my fucking God. Okay, okay, yeah, we saw her. Oh my God, okay. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Okay, we know she's in that room. Oh my God. Oh my God. And that is how quickly it can change. I really, really thought she was good. I didn't think I was going to get like a, an evil reaction out of her then. Oh my god. Okay, right. What do we get? We definitely got spirit box activity. We saw what she looked like. God, she looked old and her face looked... Oh, it's horrible. First one was spirit box. Second one, what else have we seen? We're getting nothing on EMF. Fingerprints, I'm going to go back in. Maybe ghost orb. I'm back in the building, heading straight back up to the room where she appeared. I'm going to put down the camera. Hopefully we get fingerprints. There we go. We got fingerprints on the door. That's our second clue. I mean, you know, I mean, you know how I'm Sandra. Fuck. I'm put, putting it there. There we go. Turn the light off. Book. Die. Okay. Oh, we're gone. We're gone. Okay. No. No. She's getting more and more hostile. Let's see if we can get a reaction out of her before we leave. Sandra Garcia, do something. Okay. Yeah. No, we're leaving. Whew, okay. So, I don't know if you guys caught that there, but we definitely got two more pieces of evidence. We got something in the book which just said, die, die, die. She walked over it as she was walking to us. So that was probably when it appeared in the book. And then there was fingerprints on the door. That leaves us with our final two pieces of evidence. So let's do fingerprints. And it was the book, wasn't it? Which should work out what we have. We've got a spirit. So what does it say about a spirit? A spirit is the most common ghost you will come across. However, it is still very powerful and dangerous. They are usually discovered at one of their hunting grounds after an unexplained death. Unique strengths, nothing. Weaknesses, using a smudge stick on a spirit will stop it attacking for a long period of time. Well, we have that. Cleanse the area near the go. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use it. Breaker box is tripped. Right, using the smudge sticks. There we go. The light's just turned on. Cleansing the area. You can't do anything now. Just gonna test it. Sandra Garcia, do something. Oh my god, she can do something! Wait, is she stuck? 
She's a shadow figure. Yeah, she's totally stuck. She can't do anything because we use that. All right. I'm happy. I'm happy that we've done that. <sighs> Guys, the hairs on the back of your neck. When you have an interaction like that, the hairs on the back of your neck completely stand up. It's like you, that fight or flight response. It, it really does. It brings it out of you so quick. Right. Let's close the door. Pretty positive we're dealing with a spirit based on the evidence that we found. We used a smudge stick to cleanse the room that she was in. We definitely got an instant reaction when we did that with a shadow figure appearing. All right, let me place this back down. And the smudge stick, I think that is used. And the lighter down too. So evidence found. Spirit box session where we got something. It sounded like she was saying either eat or leave. And then we got fingerprints on the door. And then the book was written in, so ghost writing. Are we not picking anything up? in here let's just give it a second see if anything appears yeah it's been a hot minute and nothing has appeared on there i think it's because of the smudge stick so we'll call it a day let the ghost teams come in let them know that we think there is a spirit at this location so there we have it two solo investigations complete with two really different locations as well the first one i think it was tanglewood was a pretty normal city house. I mean, it was terrifying what was going on in there. But we had to go down into the basement. But the second house, the farmhouse, it just had much more of a creepy vibe with that old creaky wood. Especially when she appeared in that top room up there. But things just get worse from here on out. The higher the level, it seems like the more activity that I've been finding. So if you guys want to see more of this, potentially more solo investigations, potentially more investigations with other people where I can show you guys what it's like with the tech on board, and someone in the van keeping an eye out for us then let me know down in the comments either way i've been having a blast with this if you want to check it out for yourself a link is down in the description but for now this is where we are going to end so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your support and i'll see you all in the next one